you don't have to let the pressure from outside to affect you. Uh, the same car that I was driving in 2010 when I started working, I'm still driving the same kind of a car. I haven't changed a lot of things, but my salary has been changing over the years, but the lifestyle still remains the same. Hi and welcome back to the First Time Homebuyer Show. I'm your host, SD Class, and we are in the absolutely amazing Santon Johannesburg, as you can see my beautiful view behind me today. And of course, I'd like to first thank Properties.com and Eboqua Grain for giving us this opportunity in this absolutely gorgeous apartment. If you are interested in short-term or long-term rentals, do contact them because they can make your dreams come true. Imagine living in Santon in this gorgeous apartment because it's absolutely stunning. And without further ado, you know that we do have shows coming to you every weekday this week. We've got Zamantungwa Kumalo with the Private Property Podcast. That's live from Monday to Wednesday every night at 7 p.m. And of course, we've got Mbali with the Farming or Agriculture Podcast every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. And of course, Chad Viveros travels Johannesburg looking at amazing mansions all the way from Stain City to Houghton to Santon. If you're interested in investing in property, now is your chance. Follow Chad as he tours these amazing houses around Johannesburg. And without further ado, I am sitting with the absolutely amazing Mr. Percy Singo. Good evening, Percy. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time out to, to spend the day with us and, and tell us a little bit about, you know, how savings and, and how this helped you actually become such an amazing property investor. Percy managed to actually purchase three properties during lockdown. That yes. is absolutely amazing. And I think the key thing here is that you managed to save. So let's get into it. Let's, let's start, you know, all the way when you first found out about this thing called savings. Okay, no, thank you. Uh, I started hearing about saving back then in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in a church and my mother was a cleaner in a church. She worked there for 15 years. And then she was taking me to every conferences and every uh, event. But then that's when I learned a lot about saving. So I was already waiting for the opportunity to start implementing uh, all those things that I've learned. So when I started working back then in 2010, uh, I was earning just roughly around 6,000. It was just internship or in service training, but I was saving around uh, 3,000 uh, on a monthly basis. That's where everything started. Uh, so that's when I learned the principle of saving. Uh, it's where I learned the discipline of saving uh, because uh, now at the moment I'm saving a higher amount but uh, it doesn't matter the amount that I'm saving now. What is important is what I learned then when I was saving uh, that 3000 That's when I learned the discipline, the consistency. That's when I learned to sacrifice and to also not be affected by the pressure outside. Because as I've studied civil engineering, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of expectations. But uh, I don't let that affect uh, my saving uh, journey. Yes. Percy just had to let us know that he's studying civil engineering and you're also doing your master's now at WITS within the same, obviously, um, profession. So congratulations. But And I have a question about that though, right? Because I know doing your master's is not easy. And all this time and all this, yes, of course you're disciplined. And I feel like savings actually disciplines you for other things in life. You know, other things, other things that come across your path. How are you managing to do your master's and save and invest in property? Because I believe investing in property is a job on its own. How do you manage to do all of that? I believe it's about putting the priorities in place mm -hmm. so that your priorities are in place and then you avoid certain things. At the moment, there's a lot of things that I'm avoiding so that I can focus mainly on the masters, on uh, investing, and as well as my day-to-day -day job. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that I could be doing now which are for entertainment that I've put aside just so that I can focus on those goals. Mm -hmm. It's almost like changing your lifestyle. Yes. You need to change. So yes. what would Percy be doing if he didn't have to save all this money? Uh, there's a lot of things that I could be doing, uh, including traveling. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of places I would like to go, but I can't go there on a monthly basis. Now it has to be maybe once a year. 
and then so that I can I can manage on focusing on uh, saving that money for the goals that I have. Mm. And yes. I want to go back to you know your upbringing and you know being raised in, in church and finding out about how to save and and one thing I noticed about you especially just before we the show and we chatted you saved exactly 50 percent of your salary every month for a good few years right how did you manage to do that because that is discipline on a whole other level oh yes uh, it goes back to 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 the same thing i was talking about of discipline mm. to say you don't have to let the pressure from outside to affect you uh, the same car that i was driving in 20 10 when i started working i'm still driving the same kind of a car i haven't changed a lot of things but my salary has been changing over the years but the lifestyle still remains the same mm. so there's been a lot of changes in terms of uh, even income i'm no more relying only on my salary i have other side businesses but uh, the lifestyle uh, it's not changing what is changing is the saving so even if i'm earning uh, uh, more now uh, the principle remains the same the same principle that i applied back then when i was earning six thousand mm. what yes. would you say is percy's because so you you're a property investor now right yes. you bought three properties during lockdown how was that possible besides having a saving strategy how did you manage to do that because that's absolutely amazing uh, there's a lot of advantage now during COVID because the interest uh, went down. So even the affordability, it's, uh, you are, if before you couldn't afford a house, now you can afford it because uh, it has uh, impacted that. So I use that advantage to say uh, maybe a house of 50, which says they need an income of 50,000. I couldn't afford then, but at the moment now I can afford it. So I bought a lot of properties now. And then I was also able to uh, develop them or to extend them and um, uh, make them into rental incomes so that even if the interest goes up again, I, I am not affected that badly because I have a strong income coming through. Mm. Yes. You spoke about um, you know, t paying one property off cash. But before we even get to that, I know that because when I read your bio, there was a lot of figures and a lot of numbers. And yes. I want to dive deeper into that. Right? right? Give us a little bit of your journey from 2010 all the way up until now, like how you managed to save these amounts of money and how you just a little bit about that. OK, I started in 2010 and then I was earning uh, 6,000 as an intern and then I was saving 3,000. Then I was in, staying in Mpumalanga, which a uh, accommodation it's more affordable than year in counting mm -hmm. then when i started working as a professional that was 2011 uh, as a professional engineer then they were paying me 10000 then then i was saving 5000 so i saved that 3000 for a year then i had 36000 then i saved the 5000 for a year i had 60000 so combined i had something like 96000 then i saved again for a few years just up until 2013, then I had 120,000. I went and took that 120,000 and bought my first car cash. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I saved again, but I didn't have a goal to say this is what I'm saving for. And then again, that's a problem to many people to say just to put the money in the bank, it doesn't help because the interest is very low. Uh, you can find you've got 100,000, but you are getting 600 on interest on a monthly basis, which is not helping you earn anything. So I started to decide to say, let me go into property uh, business. That's when I went and bought my first house in 2015. So when I bought it, I told myself if I could pay off my, if I could pay my, my car cash with a saving of three years, it means I can pay off this house in a period of three years. But then I was now earning 30,000. So I was saving 15,000 on a monthly basis for a period of three years. After that three years in 2018, I had 520,000, which I took and went and pay off uh, the first house. Then after that, for two years, from 2018 to 2020, I was not buying any house mm -hmm. until last year, 2020. That's when I started to say, now let me start buying more properties for business. Then I bought three properties from last year to now. Right. So, Mr. Percy, you spoke about, you know, how you managed to save up so much and buy that car cash. And we currently live in a society where, uh, you know, as soon as we do get that fat paycheck at the end of the month and 
debt has become a part of the we're part of the debt system and one thing i've learned on the show is that not all debt is bad debt mm -hmm. and that word credit comes up quite often mm -hmm. and i think especially with, with among us as young adults it's so difficult for us to shift our mindset and to invest not even invest to build up this credit for things that we do not necessarily need so percy my question to you is you know, how do we as uh, young adults avoid debt, avoid living an unnecessarily luxurious lifestyle? Because, you know, we've heard stories of where you get your paycheck and you have to pay off your car, you have to pay off your rent and then bundle depleted. And now you're out here borrowing money from friends and family. So how do we avoid this debt? Yeah, no, that's a very sad reality because most of the people that I talk about, I talk to uh, about investment, they are dealing with the same problem where you find a person is getting paid today, uh, but after two weeks, uh, they don't have anything, even transport money just to go to work. Uh, but I feel like the way to solve it is to try to avoid a uh, small debt, like to go and take a loan for small debts, which are things that you can save and pay uh, those things cash. Mm -hmm. So I will say when you go to take a debt, it should be a debt for something very important mm -hmm. and then something that again it can generate money for you. Mm -hmm. Because there are debts that we really are unnecessarily, so like uh, debts which you find you have all these small accounts, accounts for clothes, accounts for phones, accounts. So in that position, you won't be able to have extra money to save in order to venture into property investment. So I would advise to say, let's try to avoid uh, unnecessary debts or the small debts where it's something that you can, you can pay cash. And then if something you cannot afford, uh, it's better to just not afford it. Just not have it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because we end up entering into all these small debts and then they keep us from investing into other things. The bigger things, you yes. know. Because I think you're right, we focus on what's right in front of us and the yeah. now instead of the future, the generational yeah. wealth we would you begin to talk about, yeah. you know, the all of those. You know, you 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 talk about small debts being clothing accounts, um, furniture accounts and all these things but a lot of us are now opening these accounts because we'd like to start our credit record and we'd like to have a good credit score to invest in that property to approve for that bond later on mm. so how do we then do that now? i don't think that one debt can really mm. take you out of course but it's because we end up having a lot of those small debts mm. and then when you combine all that money that you have to do the repayment you find it becomes a huge amount. But if it's just a one debt, I don't think it can really take you out of the journey. It's that excessive yes. um, mentality. You know? Yes. Have, you want all of this now, and to do that, that, that could be you know, a detriment to yourself. Yeah, you know? even that one account, again, you still have to manage it properly. Yeah. Because even if it's for a cloth, mm -hmm. it can end up, uh, the repayment can end up being very high depending on what you are doing with it. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to managing uh, money and yes. managing your lifestyle. Yes. Again. yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. So which goes down to the same thing to say if I'm a civil engineer, it doesn't mean I must go and buy an expensive car. Yeah. I can tell myself that for now, for this period, I'm just investing. But I know in the future I will buy that expensive yeah. car. But at the moment, it's about me driving from my place to work and being able to save that money that I can save. Exactly. So at the moment now, I save above 30000 a month. But the car that I'm driving, you cannot compare it to that. It's very minimum compared to what I save. Yeah. Yes. But yes. you also went ahead and said um, earlier that to you, it feels like a mistake paying the house of cash. You yeah. should have paid. The, why? Why was that? Why did that feel like a mistake? It felt like a mistake because I was saving it on a separate account, mm. a bank account, mm. uh, which the interest is very small. So if I was, I was paying 5,800 on, on the bond and then I was saving 15,000. So what I should have done, I should have uh, taken that 15,000 and pay it 
with the bond, with the 5,800, like to, to pay 20,800 instead of putting money on a separate mm -hmm. uh, account. Mm -hmm. So by putting money on a separate account, uh, it made it me to pay off that house in three years. But if I had put that money on top of the 5,800, I would have paid that house in two years, six months, mm -hmm. which I would have saved myself six months. And that six months is a lot of money because it's the combination of the money I was saving plus the money I was paying on the bond, which is the 20,800 times six, mm. which is above 120,000, which I, should have, I would have saved exactly. myself uh, from but that. But now that's a mistake you're never going to make again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to, you, you spoke about what's very important. This is not just about saving. No, yes. It's about having a goal as to why you're saving. Yes. And that's important, right? And I want to find out from you, what is Percy's goals going forward? Because you're obviously still saving. Uh, going forward, my goal is to invest more into property. Uh, I'm focusing more on the properties in the township, uh, which is uh, I buy just a two bedroom, then I can add around six bachelors or 10 bachelors, and you find I'm renting each bachelor 3.5, which mm -hmm. in the whole, just one stand alone, I can make around 30,000, which means if I bought the house for 700,000, uh, I'm paying around 5,300 on the bond but I'm making 30,000 and to run that whole house, it can maybe take me less than 10,000, mm -hmm. which means 20,000 is a profit. Mm -hmm. So that 20,000 adds to my saving for, the, for, for, the, for another project. I think what's so key just listening to you speak is that we do our research, especially when it comes to how much you're investing, how much you're getting back. So return on investment, this is key. And it feels like, you know, just listening to you, you can hear that you've done all of this research and that is why. And I, I think this is also important for the viewers, you know, when saving, do the research prior so that you also know how much to save and how much you're going to get out of this deal in the next up and coming years, right? Yes. And I wanted to find, because you just spoke about your goals, but also, you know, back in the years, was it 2010, you made a mistake within this property industry. This is the first time home buyer show. And I think the most, you know, we, the, f the fear that comes with being a first time home buyer or first time investor is that we might be making a mistake. Yes. So what advice would you give us? And the advice that I will give to most people is that buy early. Mm. Uh, because most of us, we get uh, employed and then we rent for, for, for so many years. And then if you are to rent in a place with uh, 7,000, for example, and then you rent in that place for 10 years, that, uh, that's 840,000 that you have wasted. And then it's not that's going into, into, <laughs> it's not going into your, your name. It's mm. going into somebody's name. Mm. So the moment you buy early, you are buying cheap and then uh, you are also saving a lot of money for yourself. And then you can pay off that house proper quickly and then you can be able to do other projects. Mm. Yes. That's very important. Um, I also wanted to find out from you because, you know, we get advice from so many people who come onto the show. And I'm sure that you've gotten some life-changing advice from people because you also, you're mm. a mentor now, yes. but you've been mentored as well. Yes. What would you say was the biggest lesson or, be, or actually, the most valuable piece of advice that you hold dear that continues to guide your property journey going forward. Okay. Yes, I've been watching a show for some time and then I, I feel like this is a very important show because it's giving information to the people and uh, to most people they are lacking information and I will advise somebody out there to encourage their friends to watch shows like this because they really help in your journey. Uh, so what I will say is that first it's about investing because uh, this is one of the lessons that I've learned that I used to focus too much on paying off things. But when you venture into the property business, you find out too, it's not only about paying off, mm -hmm. it's about increasing the income. So if I focus on paying one house, it can take me around three years or five years for others or even more. Yeah. But if I focus on getting another property, I am opening another stream of income of around 30,000. Mm -hmm. So instead of me focusing on paying off one house, it's better for me to be saving that money so that I can build more bachelors. Uh, so my strategy at the moment is that I buy a house with a bond and then I use my own money, my own savings 
to extend that house. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the lessons to say, let me not just focus on saying I want to pay off this house as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Let me focus on growing the company and then growing the income so that I can do bigger projects in the future. Mm -hmm. And yes. what, you know, there are obviously people who watch the show that want to do exactly what you're doing, but it's either they, you know, can't afford it right now or they're struggling to save because, you know, being young, it's very difficult to change your lifestyle because you want to do the nice things. We're sitting in Sandton right now and I'm sure this is, you know, where we want to be on a regular basis, but we can't, especially if our goal is to invest in property and if our goal is to, to save and to become, to be in a position where generational wealth and financial freedom is what we live by, you know. And um, so what would you say to people like that who, who just, right now they really want to, but they can't? I believe it's important to learn the principles of saving mm. because in every investment that you want to do, you'll have a problem with funding. So if you go out there today, you say, I'm looking for funding to build bachelors, you might struggle or it might never happen. So it's better to exercise that discipline of uh, saving and then avoid premature soft life where you get soft life before you even invest. So it's better to focus on investing at a younger age mm. uh, so that when you grow up, uh, you can be able to live that fancy that life. Soft life. Yes. You know, because that's what yes. we want. We want the soft <laughs> life first. <see>. Yes. <laughs> that's so important. Um, and I just before, you know, we almost, we're almost going to wrap up shortly. Before that, I wanted to find out from you um, property investment. Yes. In three words, what does that mean to you? For me, I will just say make extra money. Uh, I will say that because uh, when I look at my career as a civil engineer, I've been, do, I've been an engineer for now 11 years. Mm -hmm. And then I'm looking at uh, the property investment that I'm doing on the side. It's just around two years if I'm not including the first house because the first house was just for staying. So I've just been investing in property for business for two years. Mm -hmm. But when I look at my salary and the money that I'm making uh, through property mm -hmm. investment, the difference is just 7000 So my property investment, it's about to overtake mm -hmm. the salary, which I have acquired over mm -hmm. a period of 11 years. And this is less than two years that I've been doing property investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I will say is a property investment is the way to go because if you look outside there and then you look at the increases at a job place, you find an increase after deduction is just 500, which you can't do anything with. But if you choose to invest on things like property, you are, in re you are releasing something like 30,000 instead of just waiting for next year to get an increase. So it's very important now for anyone to venture into such kind of businesses and you bought at the right time right and you went and you bought you didn't even play around with lockdown you went and you bought three not just one you bought yes. three and you just took it and you just went with this journey and yes. you, you know you've obviously been mentored yes. and in the past two years because you're, you're quite a, you're a young property investor it's yes. a recent journey for you yes. and as we can see and proof you are proof that the journey is almost uh surpassing your employment right yes. with, with regards to the income yes. and the money that you make your return on investment so percy we just spoke about how you know your salary or property investments almost about to just take over your your actual salary that you get from civil engineering and i'm sure there are other engineers out there watching the show right now who are not on your level just yet you know maybe they've just graduated we've got young graduates maybe they haven't been in the industry for 11 years and they also want to take that leap of faith and just start investing in property. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to them if they're not exactly earning that 30,000 just yet? Yeah. What advice would you give to them? The advice that I would give is that uh, you just have to start with what you have, to start small. Uh, because most of us, we want to start fancy and then that's not possible because we don't have the revenue. Uh, to, to do that. So, for example, let me go to a different kind of business. If you want to invest into a restaurant, you don't have to come here to Senten and try to get a spot in Senten when you are starting. You can start in the township 
and just get a corner place where you can start your business there. And you don't have to be in the level where you are saying I'm building 10 bachelors in the same time. You can just start with uh, two bachelors and then with time you know you've got a plan, uh, you're gonna grow and then you will reach that uh, time where you can do bigger projects. So I think the important lesson here, and it's something that we spoke about last week on our show as well, is investing in yourself. Because what's so important is your mindset needs to change and shift as well. Because we are easily influenced by yes. social media and we do want to come to Santon immediately. We don't want to start, you know, at home in the township. We want to, I mean, most young people, as soon as we graduate, what do we want to do? We want to move, move to, to, to the city. We, we want to move yeah. out of, you know, the Cassie and whatever the case may be. And I think what's so important then to the viewers is, to change your mindset, to change your mindset to suit your budget. You cannot be living a Santon life on a different kind of budget. And I think so. I think that's a very good lesson. So Percy, I'd just like to wrap up the show again. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story with us. You know, I love hearing these real lived experiences because it just shows everyone at home that they too, wherever they're sitting, whatever position they're in, um, you know, we could have people sitting at home now that decide, Actually, you know what? Next month, I'm saving 50% of my salary. I cannot continue this lifestyle. And that's what we're trying to educate and, and motivate. And those who are driven tend to do this and tend to live a better lifestyle and start investing in this property. So just before we close off, Percy, um, we just finished a beautiful month of celebrating women, these empowered women. And we've had amazing women come onto the show and, of course, inspired amazing women at home. What would you say is your advice to these powerful women and if they want to take that leap of faith to also just start investing in because we need more women in the property industry what do you think yes no, i think uh, the same and uh, women are very close to my heart uh, even on this this weekend i will be in a show where we are talking to women so i feel like women at the moment uh, there's a lot of uh, mentality out there that uh, when you are dating somebody and then this person has money you feel like you are entitled to what they have mm -hmm. and then at the moment you find where really ladies are just celebrating to be on the passenger seat or to go to somebody's house and you do your live videos there and then you feel like it's an achievement but that's not where we should be at uh, we have to really uh, try to advise women to start things for themselves in order for them to join uh, things like property investment. We have a number of them that are coming through and it's very good to see them doing such kind of investment so that uh, at the end they can be able to stand up by themselves. Even if they're in a relationship where it's an abusive relationship, some of them you find them sitting down without being able to leave that relationship because they depend fully on this person. But if they can be able to stand up by themselves, they can be able to uh, know their worth and to leave when the situation doesn't suit you anymore. So I feel like women, it's their time now to stand up and do it for themselves. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I think, you know, um, the fact that women, and you're right, we need to take that leap of faith and invest in our own um, properties, invest in our own things. You're right, women, we need to stop being in the passenger seat. Let's drive. And yeah, I think that's very important. Thank you so much. Thank you. Last question for you, Percy. I want to end off the show on a very light note and a very good note. Generational wealth is very important to a lot of us. And a lot of us have spoken about what it means for us. Obviously, it means, you know, a legacy, leaving this generation, leaving funds behind for our grandchildren, even. That's how far we want to take it. But what does generational wealth mean for you, Percy? I tweet actually means leaving the place better than the way you found it. So if I came to Earth now, and then I've been through a lot of struggles growing up, and then I've been through a lot, I don't have to leave the people around me, or let's say my kids, yeah. in the same situation which I was also going through. So I have to invest in such a way that I'm knowing that when I leave, uh, my kids will be in a very stable place. So if I have three kids, and then I'm able to give them each a property. I know already, uh, I've left them uh, in a very good place. Mm. Yes. And you've also left them with the education and the knowledge to do the same for their kids. Yes. 
So Percy, you spoke about how you know um, you took your property investment journey and you take one property and build bachelor rooms and all of these things. So that one property then gives you a good return on investment. And I'm sure there are people you know who are ready, who have been approved and ready to to take that leap of faith and invest in property. But now they're sitting with a problem where they don't know whether or not they should invest in Soweto or Hillbrow or township areas, or should they invest once off in the suburbs what would you say what what advice would you give those who are ready to make that decision but they can't decide where location is so important yeah no that's a very important question uh, because most of us we are confused between the two to say where must i buy should i buy an apartment in midrand or should i buy a house in cosmo city between the two but for me i feel like uh, it depends on what do you want that property for. If you want the property just for staying and then you are a lady, you just finished university and you feel like you won't be safe to stay in the township, then it's okay, you can buy uh, that apartment, but you should know that this is just for staying. So when you move out, uh, when you decide to buy a standalone house, you might have to sell that house because it won't really generate any income because if you are to look at it uh, if you buy a house for an apartment for 700,000 and then you are paying uh, 5.3 on the on the bond mm -hmm. and then you still have to pay levies you still have to pay all this you find out to re, at the end of the day you are paying around 8,000 so if you get a tenant to say can you please stay in this apartment you might not make any income at all. You might even have to take some of your money to support that uh, apartment. Mm -hmm. But whereas if you are going for investment, if you buy a property in a township, like in the moment I'm having a project which I'm busy with, uh, I'm in the planning stage when I'm about to build 10 bachelors. So I buy a two bedroom and then I'm building 10 bachelors. So you can see where those 10 bachelors times 3.5, if I'm renting them 3.5, it's already 35,000. And then there's still a two bedroom that I'm renting out, which I can rent out 5.5. So the full amount from that house can be around 40,000 that you are making, which if you are to check an apartment, you can never make that 40,000 from an apartment because it's a fixed structure which you cannot extend. There's nothing you can do about it and then uh, the other problem that really concerns me is that you own the structure you don't own the land so i feel like i want to own the land and then i have the flexibility to do what i want not only on the property investment if you want to do other business like a saloon or whatever you have that flexibility in a township stand where you can do different kind of businesses so i feel like for investment a uh, township investment is the best, but for staying, uh, apartment is fine. You should not feel bad if you have already bought an apartment. It's okay, but not for investment. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so important because, you know, this leads back to your why. What is your why? Why are you investing in this property? What do you want to achieve from yes. this property? Yes. And that already helps you determine the location. Yes. Thank you so much, Percy, for joining us. To our viewers at home, we hope you enjoyed the show and learned a little bit more about saving strategies. That's all from us this evening. See you guys again next week, Wednesday, live at 8 p.m. Take care and stay safe. <laughs>